What's going on, Rovers? It's Mr. Shalott back with another lesson for IED. Today we're going to be talking about concept sketching. Uh, concept sketching is something we're going to be doing a lot in here. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time this year sketching things out, um, getting our ideas down on paper. All right. The ideas that are up here down on a 2D piece of paper, eventually we'll make those ideas into 3D objects in our design software. Now, I want to warn you up front, okay? And when I say this, not all of us are artists. <clears throat> not all of us are artists. That being said, I'm asking you to sketch. I'm not asking you to draw, okay? Two totally different things. And to be able to sketch and to be able to concept sketch, it's to be able to get your ideas quickly down on paper, okay? You're not trying to perfect anything. All right, but you're getting the idea out of your head down on the paper and give a 3D representation of an object in 2D. Okay, so we're going to use a variety of different techniques, mainly shading, all right, in order to make these objects really pop off the page. So not only are you going to sketch them, but you're then going to add some shading to give it some uh, tonal depth to be able to make it look like it's 3D, to make that object look like it's rounded. Okay, um, so let, let's talk about a few things. If you haven't had the opportunity to read through the concept sketching Word document that I have attached to this, pause the video, give that a quick read. A lot of this is review, but I would rather you read it first and then hear me say it than um, just trying to pay attention and trying to read at the same time. So, all right, so I'm gonna continue on pretending that you already read this. When you're doing some concept sketching, it's important that you observe the basic shapes of the object, depending on what you're drawing, whether it's a rectangle, circles, ovals, okay? Basic shapes. How do those basic shapes all go together? How do they blend together? And by observing those basic shapes, you're going to get your spacing down. Now you guys are gonna be drawing in our engineering notebook, which has that quarter inch grid scale. That grid scale is there to help you. They're not just lines on the page. All right, in order to get your spacing down, you can count out blocks, so on and so forth. And I'm gonna show you some examples today um, that'll hopefully help you along the way when you're working on your assignment today for concept sketching, all right? So again, we're drawing 2D objects, but it's 3D representations of them, okay? So when we're drawing flat on flat paper, we have to make those things pop off the page. And that's kind of how we are going to add some shading and I'll talk about some examples. There's some really good ones in the uh, Word doc that I have shared out with you. All right, now remember when you're sketching, every time you sketch something, you have to initial and date it. It should be done in pencil. The pencils that you use um, will vary on how hard you have to press with your pencil. We we'll all draw differently, all right? Can you use a number two pencil for this? Yes, yes, you can use a number two pencil for this. I would not, okay? I would get yourself some kind of mechanical pencil. Um, they all come in different lead weights. So, when, you know, the kind that click. If you look at the numbers on the side of the pencil, um, most of them are either 0.7 or 0.5, okay? It's the thickness of the lead, all right? If you press really hard when you draw, okay, that you're going to want to go with a thicker lead, a 0.7 or a 0.9 lead. If you're someone that's really light on your pencil, all right, then I would go with a 0.5 or even down to a 0.3, okay. So if you're, if you're in uh, the store or you're on Amazon or whatever, don't, don't go out and buy the most expensive pencil. It's not necessary, but you are going to be sketching a lot in here. So if you have a nice pencil rather than just drawing with a plain number two, okay, it can just be a plain, you know, big Mechanical pencil, those work fine. I believe they're 0.7 lead anyway. So depending on what you want to use, find yourself a nice pencil. You might have one laying around the house. If not, cheap. Get a cheap one, okay? You don't, you don't have to go out and buy the best of the best. But you need something nice to write with, and I would not use a number two pencil because the reason I say don't use a number two pencil um, is because the thickness of the lead or graphite that's in it changes as you're using it, okay? You do not get the same line thickness all the time drawing with a number two pencil. It varies, okay? Whereas if you're using a mechanical pencil, 
that lead that's getting fed through the tube at all times, okay, you always have the same size piece of lead touching the piece of paper. Whereas with a number two pencil, um, you could have a, a, a point, a rounded point. It, unless you're sharpening your pencil every time you're picking it up, it's not going to be consistent. So that's why I say don't use a number two pencil. Um, not that there's anything wrong with them, but for sketching and drawing, you want the accuracy. So I would definitely go with, uh, with a 0.5 or a 0.7, depending. And if you want to get a variety, you could go you know, down to a 0.3 or up to a 0.9, depending on what you want to do, okay? And the larger the number, the thicker the lead, okay? That's, that's, that's the difference. And um, let's see, what else do I got to talk about? Oh, okay, so when we're drawing today, you want to get a straight view of the object, all right? So when you look at an object, there's three different ways to look at it. From the top, which would be a top view, side view, and a front view, okay? You want to look at this thing and look directly straight on. And I'm going to share my screen out here so we can talk a little bit about it. So let me show you some examples here. All right, here we are in Word. Okay, so taking a look at what we have. Page two here. Let's zoom in. Okay, so I am going to ask you to find images on Google today of the stuff that you're going to draw. So you're going to find Google images of the things that you're going to be drawing. When you look for these images, you need to find the best front view of the shape. When I say front view, let me explain what that means. And I have highlighted it here on the sheet for you. Okay, it says a front view refers to the view that typically shows the longest dimension and the most distinctive shape. Okay, the longest dimension and the most distinctive shape. What does that mean? Well, when we look at these objects that we have here on the screen, all right, we start off with a highlighter. Try and make it bigger so you guys can see real good. Okay, so a couple things we need to notice on these images, all right? When you are picking an object, you wanna get an object so you're looking directly straight at the object. You also want to determine what is the best front view of the object, which means the longest dimension, if we're looking at um, here, let me use my mouse so we can point. If we're looking at the Sharpie, obviously the longest dimension is the length of the marker, okay? Or the length of the clothespin. And then you wanna see the most distinct shape, okay? Well, here, be getting to see all of these curves of the cap, all right? And how the barrel here tapers down, get to see all the nice wording, okay? That's the most distinctive shape on this particular marker. All right, when we look at the clothespin, the longest dimension is the same if we were looking at the top of this, all right? But you don't get to see the angles here, the pin that holds it together, all right? The metal piece, we don't, you don't get to see any of that from the top. So the most distinctive shape or side would be this particular side. Even though the top view is the same length, all right, and the opposite side of this marker that has no writing on it, that's the same length, but the most distinctive side is showing all of the detail. All right, now you'll notice here in these pictures, they do have, this was drawn on the grid paper, just like you will be, okay? And they have used what, what we like to term the box method, okay? So you need to determine how large you're going to make these objects. As a first time sketch artist, students often tend to make their objects too small. They don't leave themselves enough room for all of the detail that they need for the objects, all right? So when you're laying this out, you'll notice here, okay, they went with three blocks tall in order to do this particular marker, okay? And then right at one and a half, if we come across, 
takes us to the center of the cap. So their spacing is accurate, okay? If they would have went with four blocks, they would have used the, the two blocks down and that would have been the center. You need to determine how big everything's going to be before you draw it, okay? You cannot treat your, your drafting tool, in this case, a pencil, okay? You can't treat it like a kid holds a crayon, okay? You have to go light. If you use it and you start drawing really dark right away, your drawing will not come out, okay? Everything should be really nice and light. Keep everything nice and light. And then when you know it is right, then you can darken it in. So as we look at these, okay, at no point did they come in and immediately start trying to draw the marker. They might have, and you can even see it here, they used a bunch of short lines. And then once they knew it was right, they came back in one pass of the pencil and darkened everything in. Don't come in and start trying to draw the object on your first pass, okay? It's not gonna work out. You gotta figure out the spacing. How big does everything need to be in order to fit into this space, all right? They didn't, they didn't draw the Sharpie this great on their first attempt. None of you should hand in drawings this week where you tried once and it was done unless you've been taking art classes since you've been four years old, okay? So I need to see the progression. I wanna see the mistakes as much as I wanna see your final product. When we look at this drawing, okay, they have initialed and dated it over here. They have their initials and the date that they drew it. You're gonna do that to yours as well. So every time, if, if you have to draw the highlighter or the pen, 10 times, you need 10 initials and 10 dates. They're not all gonna be drawn on the same day. Some of you will start the assignment today, start sketching out, okay? You'll have today's date, you'll work on it tomorrow, Wednesday, all right? Thursday, Friday, depending on how long we let this assignment run out, it's gonna, it's gonna take a few days, okay? It's, it, this should all be done instantly in one day, draw the, draw the couple objects and be done, all right? We have to see the progression. And then once you finish and you've got the object locked in, you can start working on your shading and what they have done here, okay? Around the edges, they've made it a lot darker than in the middle to be able to show that this is a 3D object that it's round, okay? They use some light shading here on the wood, but some dark shading on the pin in order to make that stand out. You're gonna use some shading. We're all, we're all going to be using different pencils. So some of you will have to press harder than others, depending on the pencil you're using, okay? We all will have different drawing styles. So what are we doing right now, all right? What is the plan? Let me zoom out on this and we'll talk about it. Okay, so you should have already read through the, the first part of this. We discussed that, all right? Here for item number one, all right? You have to get two front view images of any of these objects. I am not allowing you to draw the clothespin and I am not allowing you to draw this particular highlighter, okay? So a Sharpie highlighter is exempt. You can't do the two that are on the page. But you can go through and pick some of these other things. You can pick another brand of highlighter, a Sharpie, a pen, toothbrush, clothespin, scissors, flash drive, coffee cup, glue bottle, flashlight, um, a beverage bottle, and other instructor improved. We're, we're not going with that, okay? So any of these objects. And then down here for number two, okay, it says sketch a front view of at least two of these objects. You're gonna select two from the list. Do not use the tape dispenser, okay? You can select any other ones other than the tape dispenser. Now I want you to notice when they're doing these, and it's important you find good images. It's important you find good images because at no point do you see the top of this clothespin, okay? You don't see the top of the clothespin. And then we come down here to the tape dispenser. You don't get to see the top of the tape, all right? You're looking at it directly from the side. The best front view of this is looking at it from the side and they have it initialed and dated as well. Okay, so keep that in mind as you're finding images because I'm gonna turn you loose and I want you to go on to Google, start finding some shapes. We're gonna come down and look at a couple more as well, okay? 
sketch a front view of at least two of these objects, okay? Spoon, fork, knife, remote control, cleaning product, can opener, okay? You get to select um, for this particular one, any two objects, okay? Two objects. And again, we're looking here at this Starbucks cup. It's a straight on shot of the Starbucks cup. You don't get to see the top where you put your lips on and the hole is to get the liquid to come out, okay? It's a straight on shot, all right? And this was all done on that quarter inch grid paper. So you guys have plenty of that paper in front of you to draw. If you don't have the paper, um, the district is setting up pickup time starting on Wednesday to be able to pick up the supplies. All right, I have put together packets for any remote student that I have. Um, contact me directly, or if you don't have the paper just yet, you can just use white paper around the house uh, for this first assignment. But I, I would like you to be able to use the grid paper um, if you have any friends that are in school now, I can send it home, but the packets are already made um, and they're going to be having a pickup date this week for anyone that needs these supplies. So once I have the final information on that, I'll pass it along. So today, the goal today before you get to start drawing is you're going to go on Google and you're going to start finding images. You need to find six images, okay? all from Google, they have to be front views of whatever shape it is you wanna draw. Please put all six of those on one Google slide, one slide, not six slides, one slide. Take a screenshot of the slide and send it to me via the classroom submission. This is not graded, but I need to look at your images and I will approve your images and say, yes, you're good to go start drawing or these four are okay, find new ones for this, all right? I need to approve your images before you're done today so you have this for the assignment over the next couple days. All right, so that's where we're at. We're going to turn you loose, let you start searching Google. You gotta find images and then we'll start sketching after I approve them, okay? Good luck with the assignment and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.